and decisive. Okay. Minister Brian Lenehan there finishing off Paul Murphy's report. We're in the eye of the storm, Brendan Keenan. First of all, your reaction, because we can all get very blasé about this, to this extraordinary guarantee from our government. Well, I mean, nothing like this has ever been seen before, but arguably nothing has ever been seen before has been happening in the world over the last several weeks and, and months. Um, it wasn't entirely what I had expected. I'd expected some version of what's being on in Europe, a kind of mixture of governments putting money in, other banks putting money in. But I think the situation here was different. Um, none of the banks, as I understand it, are particularly looking to be rescued. What they said was, look, our deposits are fleeing the country and we cannot access funds. Uh, and if that is the problem, and that is the big if that is yet to be answered, then this looks on the face of it about the best way of dealing with it. Because if the Irish banks aren't insolvent, then it's not money we need, it's confidence. And that debate goes to the whole heart of the international crisis. There's a huge argument in America on precisely this point. Do the American banks need rescued, as proposed by Poulsen? Or, in fact, do you just need something to ungum the system, and then it'll look after itself? So, for the moment, you support what the government's done? <laughs> Look, we won't, know how this, question. we won't know how this works until okay. we see if it works. Morgan Kelly, Professor of Economics at UCD, what's your reaction to My this guarantee? My reaction is very negative. Initially, when Lenhan announced the 100,000 deposit guarantee, I was very optimistic. Had we not had that, we would have had queues outside banks yesterday. However, what we need to ask ourselves, the problem here, as Brendan said, is foreign banks are afraid to lend to Irish banks. They're not afraid to lend to banks in other parts of Europe. We need to ask ourselves what's going on here. The underlying reason is that Irish banks have made very big loans to developers and above all to builders. They're losing money on these. They have a lot of bad debts. They're covering them up, but international institutions know they're there. That's why they've stopped borrowing. But what would the alternative be, Morgan Kelly? Like, if they hadn't done this today, I suppose they could have done a form of nationalisation. Are you saying they shouldn't do anything? No. They need to do what has been done everywhere else, is that as individual banks run into problems, the government goes in and, first of all, sees if they need to survive. A lot of banks in the US have just been let go. And we need, obviously, to keep our retail banks going. There are some non-retail banks that could have been let go. Nobody would have missed them. But what you need is for government to come in, offer new capital to banks in return for a share of ownership and recapitalize them. That is a real big problem here. Irish banks have made big losses on their loans. They're short of capital. Well, we but don't quite know if that is the real problem. The banks insist that they don't need capital from the government. They don't want capital from the government. They can trade their way through this if they can access the normal funding. And that's what all the discussions have been for the last three or four weeks. No, but none every of, other bank the, in the world disagrees with because them. Because other banks have gone to their government saying, give us money or we go bust. The Irish banks are not saying that. They're not asking for no, money. No, we have to ask, if this was simply a problem of liquidity, what we would have seen is that Irish bank share price today would have exploded. Instead, what we have is that Irish bank share price this evening is slightly lower than it was yesterday morning for the three main retail banks, AIB, Bank of Ireland, permanent TSB. It's not liquidity is a problem for these guys. They have bad loans. They're huffing and puffing and pretending it's not going on. The example for us should be what happened in Sweden. Nearly 20 years ago, they had a big property bubble, just like ours. At the end of it, banks lent a lot to developers and builders. They went under. The Swedish government moved in decisively, made these banks realize their bad debts, took them over, and ended up not losing money. And that's what we need to do here. The alternative, the Finns had the same thing. Like here, they ignored what was going on, said, oh, things are fundamentally sound. They ended up losing about 10% of their national income, bailing their banks so out. So you don't view it as a preemptive strike by our government? Well, it was basically they didn't really know what to do, and they decided an Irish solution for an Irish problem. Effectively, a situation is it's like you have a stupid kid who keeps going out and smashing up his I car. I think the difficulty is we know what the Irish bank's bad loans are. They're going to be uh, about 1% of their loan books. No, that's complete nonsense. What, we have a situation, so Irish banks so you, went... You disagree with yes. Deutsche Bank? You disagree with I Morgan dis Stanley? I disagree, you disagree, with I disagree entirely, that? yes. They have $25 billion in loans to builders. All the ghost estates you can see around the place, that is the capital of the Irish banks right now. They are going to make horrific losses on these.
Kevin, just to get a view from the markets, what's the reaction your stockbroker and blocks and what's the reaction amongst your company and the wider stockbroker? I think it's, it's, it's obviously been very positive. Obviously, we've seen that come through in share price reaction uh, through today. Uh, but also even international broker comments, and we're seeing Deutsche Bank come out and say this paves the way for many of the stressed banking markets. RBS have come out and said this may be the template for rescues right across Europe. Ireland is actually on the leading edge of this. I mean, we can bumble along and say, look at the UK sector, and they've seen Bradford and Bingley fail, they've seen Northern Rock fail, they've seen HBOS being mashed into, into Lloyds with massive uh, job losses, and there's a massive cost to the economic uh, outlook for the UK economy. We've done something very, very different, and we've done it very early in the cycle and before the banks get to the stage where they're actually bleeding for cash and begging the government for intervention. Of course the banks love it. The Irish government has gone along and written a blank cheque for them. I'd love if they did the same for me. But that's, that's, not the situ that's not going to save them ultimately. We're going to end up, like the Japanese did, with banks that are effectively defunct, which don't have capital to lend. Firms will be losing lines of credit. We're facing a deep recession if we don't face up to the problems we've Brandon got Brandon Keenan, what everybody has also said, apart from Morgan Kelly, is saying is you needed to look at the devil in the detail. You needed to look at the terms and conditions. I know it's only primary legislation, the bill that we have in front of us, but it is very vague, isn't it? I mean, what will the banks give in return for this great blank check? Yeah, that, 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 but in a sense, I don't think they give anything for the blank check. It's until the check is cashed. And this very conditional primary legislation says... The minister can give money to a bank uh, if the money, money is required under these terms. That's the guarantee being called in. Uh, he also then can lay down all kinds of conditions if a bank comes to him for, for that kind of help. And there will also be some kind of payment. We think there will also be a kind of a premium being paid anyway, just to kind of build up a fund. But the other thing I think that is in the legislation as well is that there will be new regulatory powers uh, in order, and this is a problem, to prevent the banks abusing their guarantee, either by giving us big juicy deposits or running out borrowing money that they shouldn't. On the detail, I know in principle you're against the guarantee, Morgan Kelly, but on the detail of what's in this bill, what's your reaction to that? It's very vague, but ultimately they've missed the point that our Minister for Finance doesn't seem to understand the very basic difference between a bank's capital which is the money that its owners put in, and its d deposits, which is what the public or other banks put in. And the problem, Irish banks don't have deposits for the reason that they don't have capital. That's why foreign banks are scared to lend to these guys. They've lost so much money lending to dodgy builders. And so this is not going to solve the problem. Ultimately, why do we care about banks' capital? It's the amount that they can lend. A bank can only lend in proportion to its capital. Banks, Irish banks have lost a lot of capital. It means their lending is going to fall drastically in the next few years. It, I mean, it, is, ultimately it is perhaps that. interesting that there's a whole section there changing the competition laws for mergers and acquisitions. So the government clearly does <laughs> agree with Morgan to this extent that they're getting ready for the possibility of some mergers and acquisitions and consolidation of the banking system. And I suppose you could say if, if one or even two of the small Irish banks goes down, then this system uh, may well work. If it's a Swedish banking crisis, of course it won't work, and they'll have made a horrible mistake. Uh, but the proof of the pudding without being the eating, and I, I don't see the figures that re or the conditions that really suggest to me that this is a Swedish situation. I, mean, I disagree entirely that Irish banks mm. currently have lent $110 billion in total to developers and builders. In a typical U.S. regional bust, they would lose about 20% of that sort of loans. We're probably looking losses to Irish banks in total of somewhere in region 10 to 20 billion. Okay, we're looking at very, very large losses unless something miraculous happens in the property market. Kevin, which it, it is a very depressing conversation for taxpayers to listen to. They already instinctively dislike the notion mm. of showing mercy to banks, throwing them a lifeline. Tonight, many of them will be worried. I think that there's a much bigger, much bigger issue as regards the economy. When you have a threat to the international banking sector, that's one thing. When you have a direct threat on the Irish banking sector, it creates a whole new stress in the economic environment. There would have been a lot less taxpayers next year if we didn't see this legislation come through the books of today. But why help banks, as Shane Ross said, who have behaved irresponsibly? Because they're effectively, unfortunately, they are the credit lifeblood of the economy. If you pull all of that credit out, if you say to the Irish banking sector, you can't raise money internationally because we don't believe you're going to pay it back. If you say that, 
basically what you do is you turn around and you take capital out of small businesses, you take uh, working capital out of small businesses, you take credit cards off people, car loans, mortgages, and you have a massive contraction in the economic prospects of the economy, which we just could not afford to see happen. OK, well, look, the second part of this bill, it's going to be discussed in the morning in the Dáil. And I'm going back to Mark now at the Dáil. But just the three of you, thank you very much. It's a subject we certainly will be coming back to. Thank you both very much, Mark. Join us in the uh, cold and the blustery wind.